from the number one on-air and online information source for the digital age. This is CNET Central. Senate, or a few, then you've got the time to play this new kind of computer game. Call them short attention span games or desktop games. They're designed for the concentrationally challenged. And you can play this start to finish in less time than it takes to download Quake. Ah, just hearing that theme music puts you in the mood for adventure, doesn't it? And this adventure you can play in less than an hour. It's a replayable desktop game, sort of like solitaire or chess, but it has a storyline, and the story changes each time you play. Unlike solitaire or actual chess, there, there's, a, there's a warmth that's involved. There's, there, there are little stories that are happening. It's Indiana Jones running around trying to um, prevent uh, thieves from looting Mexico of its um, fabulous archaeological treasures. Indiana Jones and his desktop adventures are the creation of Hal Barwood. Hal has produced several games for LucasArts, but he says this game is reaching a whole new demographic, busy, impatient people like him. I wanted to have fun, and I, I wanted to have as little resistance to having fun as possible. So the game is simple. You control Indy with a mouse. He moves through a mapped out world, collecting things to help him reach his goal. Along the way, he meets people with information and fights off lots of bad guys. Indy's successes and failures are measured on a handy health meter. And the game lets you decide how hard you want to fight. We give you a little slider control. If, you don't, if you're worried that the little banditos are going to kill you, you can just take a little slider and go zip, make it easy, and they just basically can't hurt you anymore. The idea is to let you use the time you have to have fun. So you control the size of the world, the speed of the play, and the difficulty of combat. I thought, well, it would be really fun um, to be able to do these things that would happen really quick and there'd be enough of them and there'd be enough differences among them so that we wouldn't worry too much about whether it was hard. You know, if you want to do a hard one, fine. If you want to do an easy one, great. There are 15 separate endings, but billions of combinations of worlds you can explore. And based on the success of this indie, Barwood is working on a completely new game that can be played quickly. Now that we've thrashed through the first one, we understand the, the way in which they should be made. We know how to make improvements. We can, you know, spiff it up. And uh, so we, we do want to continue with this. We think that there's a, a, a broad market for this kind of entertainment. There's even a quick way to hide the game from your boss in case you decide to play when you have a few free minutes at work. But of course, no one is suggesting you do that. At 19 bucks, Indy's Desktop Adventures is the least expensive game ever produced at LucasArts, and it ships on one floppy disk. When was the last time anything shipped on one disk? I think it was before I was born. Glenn Robenstein is here. Welcome, Glenn. Nice to have hey, you here. You sort of rushed in at the last yeah. minute. But, but what do you got for us today? This is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. It's available on the Nintendo 64. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, it's, it's perhaps one of the coolest video games I think that's ever been released. I mean, it puts you inside the Star Wars universe in a game that's just so realistic. It's really like you're playing the movie. Well, just in case anybody doesn't know, you are our ace of video critic. Right? And games critic. You yeah, do a great yeah. job of this. Thanks. Yeah, I read a column for the San Francisco Examiner and right. also edited a website called Video Game Spot. Right, World so you, you know about this stuff. Now, tell me about this, the, the particular uh, details of this game. Uh, this game, it retails for about $80, and mm -hmm. it's called Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Uh, it just came out about two weeks ago, and you should be able to find one if you look hard enough amidst your local video game retailer. It's available on the Nintendo 64, which stores are just getting more shipments of now, a system that retails for $199. It's really perhaps just the most realistic video game system that's uh, ever been put out. Oh yeah, this is the Nintendo 64 79.99. Now I understand this was very difficult to get during Christmas time. Oh yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy. This and uh, Tickle Me Elmo were the two big hot items. And you're seeing more diversity than ever in the titles. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, uh, be it explosions or whatnot, it's still a lot of fun to play these games, especially in games like Star Wars where there are all these different modes. For instance, in some things you can fly around yeah. in the Millennium Falcon. Well, this is beautiful. And, yeah, here. I mean, you're I just, mean, I love this. But this is really the great nice. thing though is you're doing all this different stuff within the game and that, that's what makes it fun and there are more genres than ever now. And if you just look at all the things that are available to you in the video game universe, I mean, it's like, it, it's way beyond just, you know, ripping a guy's yeah. head off and things like yeah. that. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that, Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> but this, for example, the graphic work on this is so much improved over what it was, I'd say, even a year or two ago. 
You know, are there more companies getting involved in this than even locally? Oh, definitely. Well, companies? as a matter of fact, though, the Nintendo 64, the system we're looking at here, was co-produced by Silicon Graphics, the technology was. Mm -hmm. So that's responsible for all the, you know, high-tech, uh, dazzling graphics here. And this game, uh, of course, was programmed by LucasArts out of San Rafael who uh, handles all the Star Wars titles on PCs and the video game systems. Yes. It takes place in between uh, uh, Return of the Jedi, or pardon me, between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And uh, pretty much, you know, it just varies from company to company. Game designers write the parts of their own games the same way, you know, a writer writes a hit movie. They're now, you know, hit designers that do just the, what's considered the best work in video games. Okay, well, this is a beautiful looking piece of work, I have to admit. Glenn, thank you very much for coming Thank you very today. much for having me. Well, here's a question for you. Are the responsibilities and the frustrations of everyday living starting to get you down? Well, just imagine if you had the weight of the entire world on your shoulders. Well, now you can. Have all that responsibility and all that power. We checked out some new games that let you pretend to control the fate of the world. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And now it's your turn. Afterlife from LucasArts sets you up as a local deity controlling the souls of a mythical planet. With the rewards of heaven and the punishments of hell in mind, you set up gates where souls may enter the afterlife. As a supreme being, you'll want to make sure that no soul is lost. Think about all those poor wandering spirits without an eternal home. Actually, I was thinking more about the impact on the eternal budget. As you test your management skills, you'll run across characters like the angelic Aria Goodhalo and the devilish Jasper Wormwood, as well as the four surfers of the Apocalypso. You may have to enjoy fun in your fundamentalism or have your tongue in your cheek to enjoy this game. If so, it'll be heaven sent. Support. Those two words can mean headache or relief to anyone with computer software or hardware problems. Tonight we'll go behind the scenes and meet the folks at the other end of the phone line and other high-tech helpers. You put the turtle back together, back on the beach. And computer help is not just business. It can be fun and games, literally. Because once you put that turtle back together, you have to put the canister inside the turtle before you bring it back to life. These are not a bunch of 20-something slackers playing computer games. They are the highly trained tech support staff for LucasArts Entertainment Company's Hintline. They spend their days giving callers hints for the company's adventure games. They've been playing this game for maybe three days, and they're stuck at the same part, and they try to get through, and they're, like, desperate. So they'll, they'll call us up, and they'll say, you know, hey, I can't get past this dog in the junkyard or whatever. And we go, okay, well, here's what you need to do. And then they get, they're very happy. But sometimes you get kids whispering to you, you know, really, really small, going, you know, I need help with the level, and you hear mom in the background, what are you doing on the phone? It's like, okay, thank you, hang up quickly. Those are, those are really enjoyable, because you're not really not supposed to be calling. And then you kind of laugh at those, you hear them whispering, you know, help me with this level quick. Getting to the next level of a game might not seem that critical, but these right. hint line workers so say to a young game. gamer, it's as important as getting a business back online. Okay, once you've gotten that done, and you've brought the turtle back to life, yeah. that eel's going to come up out of the water and eat him again. Okay. But this time it's going to blow up. <laughs> okay. Now, class, pay attention to the professor. The Invisible Reviewer and I have the skinny on a couple of cool video games. Yeah, so with all the buzz around this Star Wars and New Hope thing, we thought we'd bring down the two big Star Wars video games. The first game we took a look at was LucasArts X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter. For the PC! Right you are. The latest installment in the popular TIE Fighter series is not, however, more of the same. No way! No longer just for the one player, X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter's emphasis is on multiplayer gaming. And not just death matches either. No, but you can go mano a mano. Yeah, and that's cool. But even cooler is the ability to grab a bunch of players and load everybody up with different spacecrafts and go nuts! Super Melee! Hug Woohoo! Exactly! It doesn't have to be TIE Fighter's versus X-Wings either. You can equip yourself with any number of Rebel or Imperial ships. Very cool. 
anything to add, Invisible Guy? Yeah, just take a look. The days of having to suspend your disbelief are gone. Everything from the detail of the graphics to the sound effects to the music in X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter is authentic Star Wars. I could feel the Force swirling all around me. I concur, except for one aspect. I felt that the Imperial forces were just a little too easy to defeat. There was no real challenge from the dark side. <laughs> dark side. <laughs> okay, okay, I take it back. Hey, my friend, what was that all about? I take it back, I take it back. Look, let's just say that X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter is great fun for the PC. Yeah, I must buy for all you Star Wars enthusiasts. Okay, our second game this week is Shadows of the Empire, again by LucasArts, only this one's for the Nintendo 64. This is cool because it takes place between the movie The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, so you get to relive the Battle of Hoth. Right, this time you play as Dash Rendar, that was him, a mercenary hired by Princess Leia to help the rebels and free Han Solo from the clutches of Boba Fett. Now to succeed, you're going to have to master three different gameplay mechanics. First, you're going to have to learn to pilot your ship through some tricky airspace. Right, and since you have to frequently bail out of your craft, you'll also have to master getting some things done on foot. When you're on foot now, you can switch between the first-person perspective and a more dynamic sort of over-the-shoulder view. Yeah, that's cool, but there's still more class because sometimes you're just fending off TIE fighters while your droid counterpart drives your ship. Not as easy as it sounds. Yes, and technically speaking, Shadows of the Empire is superb. LucasArts really took advantage of the Nintendo 64's processing power. The levels are huge, and the gameplay is just plain fun. Okay, quick review. It's Shadows of the Empire, available exclusively on the Nintendo 64, and we're going to recommend that you grab a copy for yourselves, kids. Anything to add, Invisible Guy? Oh, yeah. Hey, use the first. See you next week. Class dismissed.